Lately, we've been seeing more and more brown shoots, signs that parts of the economy are slowing. Look, even if today's labor report definitely wasn't one of them. Still, we've had enough signs of weakness that it might be a good idea to own some recession stocks, the stocks of companies that make the same money in good times and bad, because their products are essential. For example, the packaged food place. This week, we got results from two packaged food companies that I've followed for ages, Campbell's Soup and J.M. Spuck. So it's worth going through what they had to say, because I think they both told a compelling story. Why don't we start with Campbell's Soup, because CEO Mark Klaus came on last night. Back on Wednesday, this company reported a seemingly confusing quarter with solid results, but management also gave us some not-so-hot guidance. In this case, some of the confusion is from the acquisition of Sovos Brands, and that's the parent of Rayos. It would have been easier, of course, if it had just been called Rayos. It's all we talked about. And this pasta sauce and also some other popular Italian food products. Campbell's Soup closed on the deal in March. So this was the first time that they incorporated Sovos into the full year forecast. And that caused a modest hit to the organic sales growth and earnings outlook because, well, see, the deal's slightly expensive up front. Over time, though, I think it'll pay for itself. But Wall Street was confused about how much of the guidance cut was from actual weakness and how much was related to the Sovos acquisition. Then on the conference call, Mark Klaus warned that the snacks business is now facing, and I'm quoting here, some short-term pressure, especially among lower- and middle-income consumers. Now, that freaked people out entirely, because even as his next sentence was much more positive, quote, we are seeing some modest improvement in the snacking segment in the most recent weeks with the expectation of more of a full, year, full recovery in the first half of fiscal 2025, end quote. So Campbell's Soup is actually optimistic on the near-term future of snacking, which is important because they have some huge snack food brands. When we had Klaus on the show yesterday, he gave us some clarity on both these issues. i got to tell you, I thought he was much better on our show than he was at the conference school. Why don't we start with the snacking worries? Listen to this. When I think about the role of snacking and I think about what we have now built in this transformed portfolio, right? 50% of the business is snacks. I see no structural problem. Okay. Um, I expect this to be outsized growth. See, that, that was so much more clear. It made me feel so much more bullish in the call. Klaus also sounded extremely bullish on the Sobos brand edition, saying, I've, got, I've done quite a few acquisitions over the years, and I have to say, really, that across the board, this integration is going fantastically. The business grew 27% in the quarter. We were neutral on EPS. How many times have you seen a big-scale integration have no dilution in the first quarter of the business? I mean, you put it together with Campbell's on a pro forma basis, the total company would have grown collectively 2%, and our meals and beverage division would have been up 5%, end quote. Okay, so that's just a much better story than I heard in the conference call. It's huge. So I think worrying about the earnings hit of a penny or two from Sobos, and again, Sobos is Brez, is in the current quarter is incredibly short-sighted because this thing's going gangbusters. Now, there were other positives, too, with Klaus explaining that Campbell's demonstrated an ability to grow sales with higher volumes, not price increases. That's important, right? Because we know price increases aren't sticking anymore, while also improving its margins, again, without the benefit of higher pricing. After speaking with Klaus last night, I feel much, much better about this Campbell's Soup story. It doesn't hurt. Stock's cheap, 14 times forward earnings. Yield, solid yield, 3.45%. You've got my blessing. If you want to own Campbell's, I say yes. How about Smucker? Okay. Now, they reported yesterday morning. Remember, Smucker was the poster child for the great GLP-1 weight loss drug scare last fall because, well, they bought Hostess. And best known for its iconic junk food like Twinkies and Ding Dongs, right as we were just into the brand new world that is Ozempic and Mujara. Unlike most other packaged food stocks, this stock really hadn't recovered going into the conference. It had come In fact, it had just set a new 52-week low last week. But Smucker actually turned in a solid set of numbers yesterday morning, and they told an even better story at the conference school. Their sales were a little softer than expected, but the company earned $2.66. Wall Street was only looking for $2.35. Smucker also offered good enough guidance for the 2025 fiscal year, which ends next April. They're talking 9.5 to 10.5% sales growth. That's not bad. Analysts were looking for 9.7. Although the midpoint of their earnings forecast was $10 when the street was looking for $10.18. Still, putting it all together, it was enough to propel the stock from $110 to $115 yesterday. Oversold. Some of the Smucker's brands are doing very well here. Management called out the strength of Uncrustable Sandwiches, up 17% year over year, doing well both at home and abroad. They have a very low price point, by the way, and that's what I think is doing well for them. Their pet food business grew at a double-digit clip after the company recently sold off some non-core brands. Their coffee division more of a wash with some brands strong. Folgers was weak. 
As for Smucker's newest segment, Sweet Baked Snacks, meaning the former hostess business, came in a little light. Even his management said the integration is going well. So, like with Campbell's, I'd call the Smucker results solid, though certainly not spectacular. But for one of the most hated stocks in the group, no, one of the most hated stocks in the entire market, solid was good enough. Looking forward, I still think the hostess deal was a mistake. And I, well, at least in terms of how much they paid, I also think that management needs to turn around the coffee situation. That said, there's a terrific value case for me for Smucker. This darn thing sells for 11.4 times its forward earnings estimates. That is three times, three turns lower than its average historical multiple. Numbers usually sell much higher. Plus, Smucker pays you a 3.7% a dividend yield. Now, that's something that will get more attractive if interest rates come down later this year. I'm still expecting them to come down, but not aggressively. Ultimately, I feel incrementally more positive on the packaged food space after hearing from Campbell's and Smucker's. For those two stocks specifically, I do prefer Campbell's. Sovos acquisition, much better than the hostess acquisition. And really playing, by the way, by the way well overseas. Smucker still has a good value proposition. Now. However, there are many other packaged food stocks that I like. For example, the protein plays. Tyson Foods up 16% since I turned positive on it in November. I even endorse, you know, I endorse Horm- Hormel. I mean, it got hit with a nearly 10% sell-off after it reported last week because the Hormel quarter was beset by one-time issues like manufacturing hiccups. I think that the climb was overblown. I thought that they told a really good story when they came on Mad Money. I would be a buyer. What else? General Mills may be the most consistent operator in the sector. Con Agribrands has a strong business in frozen foods, very popular with millennials, Gen, Gen Z. Uh, and if you believe Campbell's Mark Klaus that, for, that this cooler period for snacks is temporary, then you might actually want to consider Kella Nova, the snack food focused progeny of the old Kellogg, which completed its breakup last year. So let me give you the bottom line on this group. If you think we're headed for a slower economy, as many people do, then you need some packaged foods exposure. And we just heard some encouraging things from Campbell's Soup and Smucker. These are both decent options. Campbell's Soup is the more go-to name. Don't forget Tyson, Hormel, General Mills, ConAgra, and Kellanova, because the whole group works in a slowdown, and it always has. Why don't we take some calls? Let's go to Mike in Connecticut. Mike. Hi, Jim. How are Mike. you? All right. I'm good, Mike. How about you? Great, great. Every time I call, I can't help but say thanks for all the good years of teachings. You know, they've netted me a lot of money oh. and a lot of wisdom. Thank you, buddy. Um, Thank you. A good way to end um, the week with some nice, nice comments that I can go tell my wife when I get home. What's going on? All right. I'm in my 70s now, and I just hold four to six stocks at one time. Uh, one of the stocks I treated as you treated Apple over the years. The stock is McDonald's. Since the late 80s, I've been buying up it, and uh, I did this because the stock was so iconic. Every time it was broken, someone would swoop in and fix it, not to mention the great dividends and the splits over the years made it very compelling. Two summers ago, I started selling it off. I sold 400 shares because it's not been progressing like it uh, was in the past. Um, I still hold 300 shares. My thought is I should sell them and then start buying up uh, Chipotle, maybe. Okay, let me give you two views on this. One is that you're right. McDonald's is not doing what I thought. They, they charge too much. They've not rolled back prices enough. They seem to have unruly franchisees who don't want to go with them, and they don't come on air and tell us what the hell's going on. That's not acceptable to me. That's not the McDonald's that I want. Secondly, though, Chipotle, I think Chipotle's great. you got a big split coming up. There's some people who are still concerned that they, they, they still believe, and it's really from TikTok, that they made the stuff smaller. Brian Nickel came on the show and said they didn't make it smaller. I'm going with Nickel over TikTok. Uh, I think that, it, that there's going to be a lot of stock coming from that, uh, that split, and you don't want to buy it ahead of it. You want to wait. Okay, anyway, thank you for those kind comments. When it comes down to the two packaged food stocks that are reported this week, I'm leaning towards Campbell's over Smucker. But the entire space is intriguing. Well, if you think there's going to be a slowdown there. Now, much more mid money. I'm seeing if Forward Air and Great Lakes Dredging and Dock are worth putting your money in. Then I'm giving you my take on the Wall Street and Washington mindsets after May's stronger than expected jobs report. And of course, all your calls rapid fire in tonight's edition of The Lightning Round. So stay with me. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com. Or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.